Welcome to a very special edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to have some transparency on this. Uh, the, today's guest and I recorded last week, uh, and then he announced something on Saturday afternoon. So I, I randomly messaged him Saturday evening and said, hey, can you come back on so we don't seem like the out-of-date show? And he has graciously accepted that position to come back on Sunday afternoon for Monday's release. So Zach Abdi, welcome to the show. I already I said that to you, but welcome back and welcome to the show. <laughs> it's good to be on the show again. <laughs> so Zach, you know the very first question I've asked you last time, and I'll ask you this time, where's your sense of duty to serve come from, Zach? So um, when it comes to giving back and a sense of duty, for me, it's always something um, my parents instilled in me, uh, especially as um, Coming from, like, my background growing up as a kid was mostly, I grew up in a um, working class, low income neighborhood in Toronto in government housing. And my parents told me, if you ever reach a position where you have more opportunities than others, never um, forget to give back. But where, what really motivated me to seek the, originally the Alberta Liberal Party nominee, then later the Green Party of Alberta nominee was um, during uh, 2020, the COVID lockdowns. I'm um, seeing what happened to the um, the homeless uh, population um, in Edmonton, in city center, where because of the restrictions, although the restrictions were needed, uh, but because of the restrictions, um, shelters were at a reduced capacity, and this led to um, a relatively large encampment. Um, that's about a five minute walk from where we live, and seeing that, um, it didn't sit right with me, and it didn't sit right with me that they were getting the short end of the stick, and I really wanted to uh, make a difference. Okay, so the last interview, let's just forget about what we've talked about there, because this is a completely different interview because of the news that you broke on Saturday night. So that is September 17th, Saturday. You announced that you were no longer seeking the nomination for the Alberta Liberals in Edmonton City Centre, but you were instead seeking the nomination for the Green Party of Alberta in Edmonton City Centre. And I want to read the four tweet that message that kind of blew up in some sense because it kind of went i don't want to say viral but it went far and people started using it to attack different parties and that is and i'm quoting you here i have an important update to share about my campaigns after speaking with close family and friends i've decided to withdraw my candidacy to run for the alberta liberals the Alberta Liberals have fought hard for Albertans in the past, but it does not have the energy to take on the challenges facing Albertans today when it comes to climate change, the economy, and our democracy. I just want to make sure. I've decided to seek the Green Party of Alberta nomination for Edmonton City Centre, Jordan Wilkie, has been doing incredible work in making the GPA a strong progressive alternative for Albertans. I share that vision with Jordan and the Green Party of Alberta. I want to take part in building a better Edmonton City Centre and Alberta. I strongly believe that the Green Party of Alberta is the bold progressive change that Alberta needs. End of the four tweets. <laughs> so the million dollar question that has everyone asking right now is why the change? You, you, you talked about it in four tweets, but this is not that show where we just do tweets. We go in depth here. So let's mm -hmm. talk about the, what changed from the time we last recorded to Saturday afternoon when you said, okay, enough's enough. I see a better uh, version of what I represent in the Green Party of Alberta. Um, it's a, a lot of things. Um, so a bit about my background. I've been involved with the Alberta Liberal Party going back to as far as um, I started 2017. I started off as a regional um, chair um, with um, Irene Hunter, where we were both the co-chairs for Edmonton. Um, I helped on, um, with the local candidate for Edmonton Northwest uh, for Brendan Teixeira, and I've done a lot for the party. And after the election defeat in 2019, um, I was part of the, uh, the special committee um, to analyze and review what happened uh, and just kind of like post uh, election, what it means to be locked out of the legislature. And 
it was, we came up with a lot of good plans um, and the report was received well. And then COVID happened um, in 2020. And of course, being locked out of the legislature disadvantaged um, smaller parties. But um, when we did that interview, um, full disclosure, I was kind of on the fence. And <laughs> I, and in hindsight, I probably should have just disclosed my intentions then of what I was thinking. But um, it really just comes down to energy. So did you have right? a conversation um, with Jordan? Did, you, did Jordan and you reach out? Have you had you guys been talking prior to this announcement on Friday or, or on Saturday, I apologize, or was this uh, something that you did by yourself and after, like you said, family and friends that you talked to, you decided on your own uh, free will that you would, you, your best chance to have that progressive voice, as you said, would be the Green Party of Alberta. Yeah, and um. I did speak to, we did, I did have a phone call with Jordan and we spoke for a few minutes and we did um, DM each other on Twitter, we went back and forth. And it's something that's been on my mind. I mean, the Green Party, it's, it's a party where like the, the Green Movement in general, the six like core values are values that I generally believe. And I do believe it's also values that most Canadians share. And it's when I seen Jordan's podcast, um, um, the first two podcasts he, he did with you. Aww. And um, <laughs> yeah, it it gave me that spark to like, I was really inspired just to see his energy uh, and to see um, um, the commitment that he's bringing in the vision and really bootstrapping the party, building it up. It's It's something that and really, I, I, I do think the Green Party is like, I'll be blunt, they're better positioned to be, in my opinion, a alternative third party for Burns in the future. So we, we, we're going to talk about Edmonton City Centre like we did in the last interview a little bit later, but I want to stick with the, the Green Party here for a second because... Um, you're talking about being that progressive voice and I, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, Zach, but yeah. it is kind of where a lot of people are looking at right now and saying, okay, the liberals are in a odd place right now. They're effectively leaderless. They do have John, but they don't have a permanent elected leader. Um, you have made the sort of the first move to say, okay, the progressives need to consolidate behind one party in the next election if we want to be heard. You chose the Green Party of Alberta. Um, I've had Jordan sit down and talk to me one-on-one -on -one and you, like you said, in those two interviews that we've done. And one of the big things that he's running on is proportional representation. PR, PR, PR. He wants to change the way that this voting happens. Are you in favor of uh, proportional representation within the province of Alberta? Um, 100%. And uh, with the Alberta Liberal Party, we were um, on the our PR was in our uh, platform. And it's something I do believe in, right? I do think the best, um, the best electoral system to have in, in, in a democratic country like Canada is proportional representation. It's the, it represents um, society best, right? And even, and I do like, and I know what people are gonna say counter it, right? It might lead to um, more uh, coalition governments. It might lead to more uh, frequent elections. And that may be true, but it will lead to, um, it would foster more like parties willing to work together. And, you know, cause, and, and also largely, um, I think with the passing of the queen, it's a good time to kind of assess like what we inherited um, from our colonial governments and see what works and what doesn't work. And I do think PR is something that does work. You, you, uh, you, you, you're kind of a new member to the Green Party. I'm assuming you've taken out now, taken out a membership of the party. Um, yeah. What is there an active uh, writing association in Edmonton Center? Is this something that you have to sort of kick up and start doing? Is um, did, there, there Jordan, is already an active? Um, there is already yeah, an there, active. Yeah, there is an active. Yeah. So and, have and you already introduced yourself to these people? I know it's only been twenty four uh, hours since you announced, <laughs> yeah. and it's kind of hard. But you announced, and you announced that you're running for the nomination. So you have a lot to do in a very short period of time here. Correct, and I did reach out to the uh, the um, um, to uh, one of the members of the local constituency over email, and whenever um, once the next meeting scheduled, I will be attending. 
and I did take out a membership as well. <laughs> you never know. You and, never know. You got to yeah. ask questions. And it's 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 and in my tweet, you're gonna notice like I used the word energy, and I don't want to knock on previous uh, generations, right, um, of members of the Liberal Party. They've done a lot of hard work, but where the party has come short is attracting young people, right, to infuse um, energy into the party, right. Um, to give you, for example, the policy meeting workshop, the second workshop, it was canceled, right? Um, the, um, they're doing a special, um, there's a special meeting happening Monday to amend some of the bylaws. Um, it's out there, um, it's public information, but even to organize it, like to get a quorum, like it was all last minute, right? And it's, it's, and I do want to take back some of the criticism where I did uh, lay on Valerie. Um, like she may have challenged, she may be challenged, um, challenging her energy. And, um, I may disagree with her on other things, but there's just no, it's a social club, right? Like it's, there's no, like there's a lot of structural issues, right? And one thing, um, one of the biggest issues hurting the Alberta Liberal Party, and this is my opinion, and, and this is all just from my experience and what I've um, seen from my eyes the last couple of years of being a party member, is there's, there's this divide um, between Calgary and Edmonton, and there's this divide, um, for example, if you look at the most um, active constituency associations, they're in Edmonton, they're in Lethbridge, um, they're in Red Deer, right? Not so much Calgary, but and the party's executive team is predominantly in Calgary. And there's always like this miscommunication, um, like um, of trying to like, for example, like the last election, right? A lot of the candidates were um, alienated in a certain way and were kind of left uh, out there to dry, right? And there was no, um, you know, they were just kind of recruited at last second. And, and I get it, right? Like it's a small party, things like that happen, but, the changes that we proposed um, on that report that we did as a committee, it's none of it has been enacted, right? And I don't want to um, spend time like amending bylaws, building like the party's infrastructure. That's not what I want to like channel my spare time and energy. It's what I want to do is take part in a party that already has that infrastructure and its values that still align with mine. Do you think more Alberta liberals are out there like you right now who are struggling to stay within the party? And I, and I know we're supposed to be talking about you, but you've opened up Pandora's box here yeah. in, in this, even by open, even by saying that you're leaving the Alberta parties to go to the greens. So I want to, I want to peek inside yeah. Pandora's box, even though it might hurt me with potentially yeah, getting yeah. other guests on, but do you believe and in, in your conversations with your fellow Alberta liberals, or former fellow Alberta Liberals, do you believe there are other Alberta Liberals out there who are in the same position of you? Like, we don't want to be focusing on policy bylaw changes and all this. We want to be focusing on the next election, recouping some of the lost memberships that we have and actually start looking for candidates instead of trying to play catch up with, Yeah, is it Alberta or Calgary or is it Red Deer or Lethbridge that holds the power for the Alberta Liberals? Um. It's gonna, it's, the power lies in Calgary, but the, if you look at the donation list, if you look at the membership list, it's predominantly Edmonton based, right? And, you know, the party, like, if you even look at the fundraising numbers itself, it's, although yes, it's declined drastically from its, from its peak, um, it's still not that far off from the Alberta party, right? It's like very, like the discrepancy, it's like, it's not a, a material number. And it's just, there's no like rock bottom for the party. It just keeps going down and down and down, right? And I, I, I consulted, um, the only one um, who's part of the executive team that I consulted was Irene Hunter. Um, she's been a mentor uh, for me. Um, and I'm sad that she can't be part of my campaign. Um, she's a committed liberal, but uh, she's a dear friend of mine and uh, she's someone I do look up to. But, I have a quick, um, quick, quick follow up on that because you mentioned another party, and I want to I want to throw this little tidbit in here. You have chosen the Green Party of Alberta as your new party, your new home. 
was it an easy choice? Because you did talk about the Alberta party. There is another party out there who has a leader who is running a campaign as well. Or was it a simple, yep, Green Party is the way I believe because of those six core values that you talked about? Um, for me, the Alberta party has always been disqualified. <laughs> Why is that? Never, um, um, just the party's history, right? Like it's always morphing. Like it's always evolving right um and you know for like for example like um its historical roots start off as a as a right-wing party and then kind of shifting to the center as an independence then, party actually not not independent sorry as a right-wing party no it, <laughs> it no it formed as a it was it was an uh, independent party they wanted a independent alberta that was back in like the 80s when it first went around I think it was the like, Alberta go, Sovereignty right? Party it, it just, or something like that. It, it, it just keeps like shifting and shifting, right? And then um, you have Steve Mandel, who took and a bit for, to the for Just right. one second. I guarantee you, if Dave Cornier is listening to this episode right now, he's about to send me a nasty email saying you are wrong. They were not formed. But that's what Wikipedia <laughs> said. So I'm pretty sure Wikipedia is true. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, and, and so for me, they've always just been disqualified. And... The Green Party, I've always felt, has transcended um, the whole right-wing, left-wing um, spectrum, right? I always viewed, in my opinion, as a kind of a big tent party. Um, and of course, right, like no party represents everything, that um, all your values. But for the most part, I, I feel comfortable being a member of the Green. I feel comfortable in voting for the party. I feel comfortable running as a candidate. There may be some people out there right now saying, okay, Jordan Wilkie offered you a clear nomination for this uh, run. Um, so you you switch your party, he's going to automatically claim you as the next le uh, party candidate for Edmonton City Centre. Can you just prove that? Can you say right here, right yeah, now? Yeah, well, 100%. I, you I, have to do I, the exact uh, same vetting process that everyone else has oh, to? The exact same vetting, yes. I submitted an application. I took out a membership, right? Um, um, I reached out um, to the party, um, to you know, Jordan, to e email, right? And the only reason, and I, and one of the reasons why I reached out um, to Jordan was one, to also like full disclosure, right? That I have declared that I wanted to seek the Alberta Liberal Party, and I want to see if I like if it's still viable for me, right? And he said, yeah, um, there's a space, right? And same thing, vetting process, taking membership, right? And if I can't secure the nomination, I'll still be, I'll still help the candidate who does. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification, because I know there's one person out there who I've seen on Twitter who said, oh, he just promised you a easy nomination instead of trying to go through the process. So thank you for that clarification. Okay. Uh, so we are about 20 minutes into the interview already, and I want to turn to policy as we did in the last interview, because we could probably talk about this change for another hour, but I want to talk about policy because that's what I'd love to do as well. Um, we talked in the last interview about what you're hearing on the ground in Ed Edmonton City Centre. Now, the party may have changed for you, but the concerns are not. So the concerns that you've heard when you've been door knocking under your previous party is the same concerns that you're probably hearing right now. What are those concerns, Zach? Uh, number one is public safety, right? Um, business, small businesses along Jasper Avenue, um, residents, um, people who work um, in this in the city center, um, people who are experience who are people who are experiencing um, who are experiencing homelessness have all um, experienced some form of like um, safe um, safety issues, and when it comes to um, Right and residents, I think city centers they do want to see a party that's strong on public safety, but they also want to see a party that's also compassionate with public safety, right? And for me, the Green Party best represents the compassionate aspect of that, because in order um, to really fix some of the issues um, facing um, um, the people in Edmonton City Center, it starts with the most vulnerable first, right? And it starts with compassion. Right, they are the ones who need um, help the most, not the ones who are housed, not the ones who have um, employment. Right, and once we once we can tackle that issue from there, just kind of build it up. Right, grassroots, take it, uh, take it from um, there. 
how do we do that? Because you are running against not a UCP MLA, as most people will know, Edmonton is the predominantly orange and you have a NDP MLA. Um, are you saying that this issue hasn't been discussed from the Alberta NDP's perspective as well? Because they're the official, they're the current uh, David Shepard, your M current MLA hasn't been addressing this. Do you, would you say, or would you say that it's just hasn't been on the radar because of the COVID nineteen? And as the health critic, he's probably talking about health more than anything else. Um, it's not. A, I don't. It's. I don't don't think it's on the radar for him. And um, when I was door knocking um, prior, and this is the, probably the last time I'll mention the Alberta Liberal Party on this podcast, um, is- I'll do it for you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> when I was door knocking with the Alberta Liberal Party, um, and you know, one approach um, I did differently is we wanted to do outreach to um, um, our, the folks to our, home, our homeless neighbors, right? And I like to use the word neighbors because they do live, although they may not be housed, they do live in, um, and sadly do sleep on the streets of um, Edmonton City Center. And they are the constituents of, of Edmonton City Center. We did something different where, um, where we did listening um, uh, circles in the Chinese gardens, where we actually took down notes, where we um, heard some of the issues um, they're experiencing, right? And it's safety too, right? A lot of them, don't feel safe in the shelters and don't feel safe, of course, on the streets, right? And one um, gentleman, Terry, um, who I mentioned on the previous podcast, on the previous um, recording. Interview, yep. Interview, yeah. Um, he mentioned, um, like, the, he's never once seen, like, David Shepard or, um, or any uh, candidate or any um, MLA interact with them, right? With the exception of, like, so it's, and I think that's the piece that's missing, right? Interacting directly, not interacting with organizations, and that matters too, of course, but also interacting with the people who are experiencing issues firsthand because they have the most input uh, to um, uh, input to offer in this conversation. How do you how do you change that? Because uh, we we talked about it a little bit beforehand, but I wanna I wanna jump into this a little bit more in depth because I found this part fascinating last time. How do how do you ensure that if elected in 2023 or four, depending on when the next election is, it's supposed to be called next year, but hypothetically they can push off for 12 year, 12 months if they wanted to, the new premier could, or they could call it in May. Um, how do you ensure your constituents, the people who you're talking to that you won't run away and go do something else in some other part of the province because your focus will be on the people of Edmonton City Center. Um, if I do get elected as a green MLA, um, the next government, it, I'll be honest, it'll either come down to a UCP or NDP, but I'll, I'll still be a strong independent voice, right? A strong independent green MLA. And all my biggest like what is what um motivated me to run for politics in the first place is seeing vulnerable like just seeing Edmonton City Center deteriorate right seeing vulnerable folks like being ignored invisible right um you, you see people it's common now where I'm taking um, my dog Lexi for a walk in the morning and you see some people overdosing, right? Or people screaming for help, help, right? And people just turn a blind eye. The other day, actually, um, there was a um, an, um, a person who was experiencing um, um, home, who's experiencing homelessness, and he was in a wheelchair and he was trying to go up um, Bellamy Hill on the road, and he kept trying to roll down, and he almost got hit by multiple cars, and people were just honking and like weren't even trying to offer the, the man a hand, right? And until it was just me and a couple of neighbors, we you know we actually took him down um, the hill and we took him to the river valley. And there's um, say hey, let's, there's an elevator that can take you to Jasper, right? But it's it's the fact that no one, very little, very few people stop, right? Not many people wanted to give a hand. Or he, they just he's in my way. Get it? that sentiment, that mental, like I want it. It really makes me sick, and that's one of the reasons why I'm running. Do you think people are willing to change? 
Do you think people, because you tell that story and let's be honest, uh, I'm kind of pissed off at people who do that. Uh, we always say help, uh, help, each, help your neighbor like you want someone to help you. Um, do you think there is a potential of more people like yourself stepping up and actually helping people these days? Because COVID-19, we've kind of become isolated. Do you see a positive where people are actually going to start giving back and helping thy neighbor like you want to help someone to help you in the trouble? Yeah, I, I can it's a million dollars. It's a weird question to ask, but <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I struggle you know, with I struggle with people who don't want to help and I try to help better as much as I can when humanly yeah. possibly for transparency's sake. I've been, I tested COVID-19 positive all weekend. Yeah. So yeah. I have been completely out of the loop on how I can help people because I'm just doing what I can do here. But yeah. I, I hope people are willing to help each other. Do you? I hope so. And I think one way we, where we can all make a small difference, um, and I think it starts with that small difference. I think one way we, we can make a small difference is, for example, um, when my partner um, and I, when we go for dog walks in the morning with um, with Lexi, our border collie and lava mix, um, she's so adorable. We need photos so I can show you my border collie husky mix as well. <laughs> Yeah, she she's our secret weapon for our campaign. <laughs> but um, she like it, it's just like for example like um, the gentleman who I mentioned before, uh, Terry. Um, yeah. Um, it's just he said, "Hey, can I pet your dog?" Right. My first reaction was like, "No," right. And my partner was like kind of stepping back. And Lexi's all just friendly, and she like like just like she she's all submissive, and like she exposes her stomach, and she just wants a belly rub, and we just sparked a conversation and I got to know him. He got to know me. And through every day walking through the same routine, a lot of the folks who normally um, hang out there drinking coffee or just talking, they, they know me by, Hey, Zach, that's Zach, right? That's Zach and Lexi, or that's Lexi. Right. And they're just always saying hi. And stuff. And it starts with that, just like normalizing that, like, you know, that, Hey, they're people just like us. They're no different, you know? Does this go back to the, does this go back to the core values that the Green Party hold? Because I, I you mentioned it earlier on, and that's where I kind of sparked with that question that I just had was you said most Canadians could probably identify with the six core values that the Green Party of Alberta has. Do yeah. you think when you're talking to people, you can identify which core value, one of those six core values that the Green Party of Alberta has, can sort of bring you into a conversation a little bit better with uh, a potential constituent or a potential voter? I think it starts with two, um, two values, uh, in particular, uh, participatory democracy and um, social justice. And when it comes to like in particular participatory uh, democracy, right? And the reason why I do these listening um, to, um, sessions um, or circles is not just to hear what they have to say, but it's also to encourage them to vote, right? And um, the, a lot of the folks who do experience um, homelessness, of course, one of the things they do struggle with is having um, ID, right? And But there is a, um, a voucher, I believe there's a voucher system um, in Elections Alberta. It's a bit complicated and very gray, but um, we're gonna try to encourage, like our team is willing to like sign up people get their names, encourage them um, like to get out the vote, right? And we really do, right? And that's one way to bring about positive change, right? Even if we don't get elected, at least this is one core constituency or what's our one core um, demographic that David Shepard and NDP cannot ignore in Edmonton City Center. You are in for an uphill battle. You have a lot to a lot of work to do between now and election day. What's process number one? Where's the first step for you? Is it introducing yourself to the board? Is it getting back out on the streets and hammering the doors away? What is step one for you in this uphill battle to be the next MLA for Edmonton City Center? So step one, we hit um, a reset button with our campaign team. Um, some members, of course, left. Um, and some stuck around. And we're a smaller team, but we're more committed and we're more united than ever. Um, and that's step number one. Step number two is introduce ourselves um, to um, 
the constituency of, um, uh, of um, the Green Party constituency for Edmonton City Center and get to know um, uh, the board members there, get to know um, the general uh, party members there and just in, um, introduce ourselves and declare that we are seeking the nomination and then take it from there. You, you, you talked about uh, introducing, that's quick. You have to do that very quick. And while people may be looking at you and going, okay, who are you? Do you, do you expect people to hold it against you that you've swapped parties? Because we currently live in a politically divided country, let's be honest. I think anyone will admit that. And people may go, okay, you're a flip-flopper. Are you going to flip to a new party? Are you expecting that? And do you have, do you have some statement already prepared to say, you know what? Yes, I did. Or you know what? This is why, because people of Edmonton Center want to know the person that they're going to be voting for. And some of them may say, how can we vote for someone who switched a party midway through a nomination? You know, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, Zach. No, no, I'm, not, and, and just... I'm, glad you, I, I'm glad you asked this question. I really am. Uh, because I've seen some of uh, the Twitter comments. And <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was also surprised how um, it blew you up. Went viral, you yeah. went viral, man. You went crazy viral. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that took me by surprise. Um, but it's if people who know me, um, well, I'll start with this. If it, people who know me know, um, who I am, you know my values and what I stand for, right? And I'm all about giving back to the vulnerable, right? I, I'm tired of seeing my neighborhood um, being divided between those who are housed and those who aren't housed, right? And um, and I want I want to do something different. And when it comes to like the issue of um, commitment, right? Can Zach commit to this, right? The answer is yes. Um, when it comes to the Alberta Liberal Party. <laughs> Told um, you I'd get you to say it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was committed for a long time, right? And I do believe a lot of the values that the Liberal Party, um, some of its core values are similar to the Green Party. And I stuck around and I'm one of the naive young, um, 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 young party members who stuck to the bitter end, right? And I realized it's, I don't want to make 2023 about building party policy and like party mechanics, stuff like that. No. And I made decided to run for the Green Party. And I did tell Jordan and I'll do and I do believe that the Green Party is the party of the future, right? It is a party that can be electable, that can be an alternative choice, right? And if you look at liberalism as a whole, not to get all um, to political science here, um, do it, do it. I love it's, it, man. Do it. It's 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 declining provincially across the country, right? Um, the BC Liberals are basically conservatives. Um, Saskatchewan Liberals, the Green Party eclipsed the Saskatchewan Liberals. Um, the Liberal Party in Ontario took a beating. Um, the Quebec Liberals are on track for a terrible defeat, and it's and and there's also. There isn't that they have Newfoundland but, and Labrador. They have Newfoundland and Labrador. Yeah, and that on lots, but, <laughs> but and I, I think the biggest issue hurting um provincial liberals is that lack of support from the federal liberals. And that could be a conversation for another time. Um, but I do think the Green Party, with its support both um from the federal Greens and its strong grassroots base, um, and its it's a young party, it's a vibrant party, it's a multicultural party. It's it's an exciting party and it's a party that I wanna be part of. I'm excited to um, be part of this journey with them. Well, I can imagine that uh, the party is also excited to have someone like yourself who is engaged, who is also personable, who's willing to sit in front of a microphone and talk about uh, information like this. Um, before we go, I have a few last qu housekeeping questions for you, and you know what they're going to be, so you're probably already prepared for this, but this is a new venture for you. How can people reach out, get involved in your campaign, learn more about yourself, because uh, I can imagine this is a new venture and you're going to need a big support group this time. You know, um, for folks 
who share the same values and beliefs and concerns that I have, who live in Edmonton City Center or in Edmonton City Center or nearby, you don't, you know, just send me an email. Um, you can find my email at my uh, Twitter page, you know. And in the show notes. <laughs> and in the show notes. You know, you can't forget about the show notes. <laughs> Always can't forget about the show notes, Zach. <laughs> you know, yeah, reach out. You know, um, I'll be more than glad to grab a cup of coffee, um, sit down, talk, and see how you can help build a truly grassroots movement in Edmonton City Center. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Before we let, let you go, Hazak, I have one last question to ask you, and that is, why should you be the Green Party of Alberta's nominee for Edmonton City Centre and effectively the next uh, member of the Legislative Assembly for Edmonton City Centre? Whenever you're ready you to know, go away. Um, I'm bringing a different perspective to the table when it comes to the issues facing Edmonton City Centre, uh, and I'm, our campaign is doing something different, right? We I strongly believe the core issues addressing Edmonton City Center starts with speaking to our vulnerable neighbors, the people who are not housed, and get that and get their buy-in. And if elected as MLA, I'll be that strong independent voice um, that Edmonton City Center needs. And if not, I'll still hold um, David Shepard and the NDP accountable from the sidelines. Well, I want to thank you so much, Zach, for sitting down with me, especially on the Sunday uh, afternoon. Yeah. I can imagine you have better things to do than sit down with a show from Calgary, Alberta. But thank you so much for doing this. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And I, I will say this once again, uh, maybe later on in a few months time, we will have you back on to talk about uh, you being the nominee. If you are so lucky, if you are accepted and you are approved as the nominee. Uh, but thank you so much for doing this. No, and thank you for having me. So with that, I want to remind everyone, this has been the Cross-Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown. Um, put down your social media account for at least five minutes a day. Go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society. It helps our democracy. And it helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, my name is Chris Brown. And remember, keep talking, everyone.